Right, that's it. Right, okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Darren Connell podcast show, or should I say the vegan gorilla and chums. This is episode number two, and tonight we've got my pal, Gary Folds. How are you, mate? All right, bro, I was trying to do I was trying to do that. Can you see me? I was trying to do that. I was just see, up on stage. <laughs> I've not got my glasses on, so I was genuinely like, where the fuck did you just go there? <laughs> just in the toilet, did I shake? Like, oh, was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> That's the so, beauty of the podcast these days, isn't it? You can sit with, I've got no pants on and my bangers singing it. So. <laughs> my bangers singing it. That's heavy. I've just got a tash, mate. That's heavy sexual to me. Do you like it? See, see, to be honest, mate, see, during the coronavirus, I've run out of likes so anyway, so it will spice things up, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this should be an OnlyFans account. <laughs> Are you still not doing this? I'm still not, mate. I, I, can, I put my computer in top of my desk in my room, so seeing I'm doing stuff, like, because I write on my computer. Oh, really? I'm lazy as fuck, mate. See, I'm still not, mate. I feel a bit more productive. Um, how, how big's your desk, man? Because you look tiny. It's uh, it's quite tall, mate. It's about fucking three feet, and I'm about, about four feet two. <laughs> <laughs> Is it one of the standing desks? No, it's not a desk, mate. It's a it's my my drawers. Oh, right, right, okay. And my my boxers, mate, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so how you been, mate? You all right? All right, mate. I feel a bit better. I had a rough, I kind of rough see the start of the the lockdown, mate. I didn't see the main for about two weeks, mate. So I was struggling a wee bit. Um, Aye. I went up to stay with my mum for a couple of weeks, mate. She's she's got a few problems with alcohol and that, so um, I oh, really? a bit on. No, she's not an alcoholic. She, she's just she's an addict, mate. You know what I mean? So I went up to kind of give you a bit of support because she's a care worker, mate. So she was struggling with with the environment that she was working in. So I said, "Listen, I can come up and stay, but I can't see the veins for fourteen days. I need to isolate." Um, cause she yeah. Didn't work. So it was good, mate. Got me a bit of time, with my mum, and then after the fourteen days, I came home, mate, and, and I've got the veins now. So it's nice. Good. I've been following you on social media and seeing your your vlogs about having the, the, the stress of having the kids during the lockdown and stuff. And it seems intense, mate, but it looks like you're handling it really well. I mean, it's good. It's cause, see, because the TV ones, mate, they don't understand. The big ones are fine. They'll just mm-hmm. sit and watch TikTok all day, you know what I mean? But the meetings, they, they want to mm-hmm. go out and they don't understand that you can't go out. So they're just running about the house and wreck the place. Ah. Normally, yeah, I just right. come in the motor, mate, go to Edinburgh Zoo. Spend as much time as possible outside the house, bring them home straight to bed. It's easy as that, but when you're locked in a gaff, mate, I don't know how there's people with four or five ways doing this. Yeah, I know. I don't know how they can cope with it, mate, because I'm struggling with a few days a week. Imagine this happened when we were we guys. Oh, we what we would be like? My mum would probably get a fuck. <laughs> would you be a. He's back in the days, like, fuck up, get out and get the coronavirus, I'd have to be selfish. <laughs> <laughs> I like a chicken pot party. I'm like, oh, son, you need to get out. <laughs> Your dad's coming up. <laughs> um, but I, it's, it's wild, mate. I heard that club was saying today that they expect it to go on as far as the end of the year. Um, mm-hmm. Which was wild, mate. You know what I mean? Nicholas Sturgeon. Aye, mate. You're fucking talking, t- talking about her there like your best mates were. Mate, she's brilliant. <laughs> if, you, if you notice that, but see, like, you talk about like, Trump. They're like the President of America, the Prime Minister of Britain. Nicholas Sturgeon, like that mad Nicola, he was just saying the other day. <laughs> Right. She? <laughs> uh, she has one of the trips. Oh, she's, so. ha- she's handling the situation really well. Mm-hmm. It's a crazy time, isn't it, mate? I think the last time I spoke to you, what a different world it was when, I mean, the last time you were on the podcast, all we did was talk about kebabs, didn't we? And the uh, chans. <laughs> no, stands. Stands, I. Chans is one up here. Um, I, chans is the dentist beside it. That's it. <laughs> Same <laughs> thing, guy. I've actually never had a stance, mate. Honestly? Honestly, mate, never had a stance. That's one of Springburn's finest, mate. I know. I've been in the chippy next to it. Gills? Gills, aye, bro. We can't I... fucking talk about gills again, man. That's all we spoke about last time, remember? Oh, was that? <laughs> yeah. Aye, I got a fucking chubby talking about gills. <laughs> um, also, that's what I've done, mate. See, for the first two weeks, I just ate takeaways every day, mate, and it burnt us out. Um, mm-hmm. So I came away for that, mate, and just started a bit better, so I feel better, but... Brilliant. I can, when I look through your social media, I see, I see that you were doing the cold water therapy with your mum. Oh, amazing, mate. That's brilliant. I tell you what, it looks really therapeutic as well. When to do something like that with your mum just seems like pretty cool, I know. Like, how yeah. did you find out about that? Was that your mum that told you about that? I've done it, mate. My mum went and done it first. 
my ma's one of these people, she just, she, my ma struggles mentally, I know, but she's mm-hmm. one of these people who try everything, mate, they should find something that works. So she's good in that sense, because she'll come back to me and say, oh, this is good. Tell me what ma. She'll be like, that's a lot of shit, but she says, this is really good, you'll enjoy it. Um, yeah. I'm up for that. I've jumped in water before, but so I've been up, mate. I just dived in, new bit suit. I've never felt it like it in my life, mate. See the see my boys, mate. My boys popped inside us and came up my ass, mate. It was it wasn't normal. <laughs> um, but but after a few times, I, I got a wet suit, so it made it much easier. Um, but what you do, mate, you get in the water. It's the whole thing. It's the fear. I think that's the whole thing, mate. It's about the see that feeling you get when you're having a panic attack. And you're like, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. And then when you do it, you have that whole shock to your system. And then you've got to breathe because your, your whole body's just going into cold water shock. So you've mm-hmm. got to breathe good. So it's good because it teaches you to breathe. And then once you get it, once you understand how to handle the water, you, you're just lying in the middle of a lake, mate, with mountains on you. And it's just fucking beautiful, mate. And you come back, mate, you just feel brilliant. But um, I had to, uh, you need to do stuff so you get away from your environment because. You know what it's like, mate, being a comedian, as long as a stress, you've got to write new jokes, you're dealing with people that want stuff off you, and you need yeah. the time to, to get away, and I do walking, you know, I'm back out walking every day, um, it's so good. I've seen that, it's and so it's paying good. off, mate, because you're looking fantastic. Uh, yeah, I lost two stone, see, before the, the corona thing, I lost two stone, and, um, mm. just walk, muscle food sponsored us, mate, um, so they were keen as my dinners, and it was, I tried vegan, mate, I went vegan for a week. And uh, I'm just a pure slut, mate. I loved it. The stuff was not <laughs> Did you say you're a slut? I'm a pure <laughs> slut, mate. I just can't, can't get away from the meat, mate. <laughs> so but, I'm the vegan gorilla and you're the vegan slut? <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, on, on muscle food. They didn't have a lot of options, mate. So it was like the same dinner every other night. Mm-hmm. It's really easy to cook, mate. You know what I mean? So, um, But it was nice, mate. But I'm uh, just enjoying it, mate. So three days I'm in now, eating healthier. I'm starting to be online course tonight as well um, on CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. Brilliant. So I'm going that to do is... it. It's a pra- practitioner's course, but I'm not doing it to work. I'm doing it to help myself. You know. So see if somebody doesn't really know what that is, because I've heard of that, but I'm not too sure. Could you explain it? It's about your mind in it, I'm sure. That's why I'm doing it, mate, because I've just heard it's fucking brilliant for anxiety. Yeah. Um, one of my yeah. pals, she studies psychology and she said it's one of the most effective um, methods that they use for depression and anxiety. So I'm going to get a bash because I've done hypnotherapy and it's like, it's need to pay somebody two, three hundred pounds to give me CBT. I'll just yeah. go to the course and I'll learn everything about it and I'll use myself as a guinea pig. Mm. I support that 100%, mate, especially in times like this. You need to look after yourself. Mm-hmm. I always say, see everything that you need to make yourself feel better, you've probably got it in your house or it's available on your iPhone. Do you know what I mean? Cold water, get that for the shower, drink water for the tap. I've been doing intermittent fasting and see the feeling that that's gave me, mate. Unbelievable. So good. And just trying to remain positive because, like, excuse the language, man, everybody's fucked right now. Do you know what I mean? My wee cousins, they're, they're Muslims. And Matty married a Syrian guy, so they do, they do Ramadan every year. And see oh, okay. that, mate, they look fucking brilliant. All of them just look pure healthy, you know what I mean? Because yeah. obviously, fast for a minimum of 12 hours is it? They like to sunlight, I don't know. I've seen the fast, mate. I've seen people fast, I've seen the benefits that people get after. It's, but they always talk about the clarity and the heat they get for it as well. Aye. Makes you feel happier. And obviously, because I think we're basically the same person, aren't you? See, when you eat and you're fasting, mate, it's better than Eckies. Really, are you? It's the I mean, a Muslim wouldn't say that, would they? But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll it's I'll fucking go amazing. I'll hold you to an Eki before. <laughs> is, is Ramadan like Eki's? <laughs> you fucking shit me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's, you know what? Everybody's in it together, aren't we? And I tell you what, no, that I've noticed is see people who do suffer from anxiety, and I'm not talking about everybody, but people in my life that I have noticed who do have mental health problems and anxiety, they are oddly dealing with a situation a bit better than people that never suffered from that. Like, maybe because they're just like, I don't know. Well, that's that's my thing, mate. I've got social anxiety. So my big thing is, is like, I can be a hermit, mate. I could sit in this house for 100 days without battling an eyelid, mate, because this is my environment. I've named mm-hmm. it with me. I'm hiding away. It's perfect. You know, other than no seeing the veins, 
if the veins were getting broke to me, I would cope with this fine. But my yeah. big worry was, is that what, what am I going to do after this? Because this might go to the end of the year. I'm not trying to be negative, but this might go to October, see? See if I sit in my house in October and don't leave the house, mate. I'm not going to leave the house in October because I'm going to be comfortable in the bad surroundings in my house. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I've started the walking, get myself back out again. Go and pick the wings up, stay there and get dropped off. Then the CBD course. Because I'm treating this like a kind of like a boot camp. And see mm-hmm. sit and get fat, play my PlayStation. I'm treating it like a battle camp, getting ready, getting built up mentally and physically. And then when we go back to normal, I'm going to be feeling good, mate. Do you know what I mean? And, but yeah. Uh, it's just try to cope with it. See, today I was sitting for two weeks, three weeks, I mean, just demented, he'd fly, you know what I mean? And eating shite, no doing anything, just sleeping and chugging. So I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I'm at the other side. I hope I'm at the other side. I hope I can carry on with this. Uh, it's a strange, I mean, self employed people were all the same, but such a weird thing for, you know, we, we lost everything overnight, didn't we, really? Mate, I'm fucked. Just, See, financially, mate, if I didn't have my DVD, mate, I'd be fucking <laughs> really struggling. Yeah. Um, just saving grace, mate, that I had to put that out digital yet. Um, Aye. But it's scary, mate, and that's my big worry. Like, if I need to wait to October, I'm fucked. Um, yeah. So I'm trying try to get a job, mate, driving the lorries again. Because I need to do something, mate, I can't sit about. I've got wages to provide for. I can't Aye. sit about, you know what I mean? And, and you're the same, you've got bills to pay. Um, Aye, exactly. Scary, that. that's the scary part of it, I think, the financial side. That's where the stress comes from for me. I can't mm-hmm. handle finances. It stresses me out. Aye. Aye, that's not my strong point. I would have no problem about going back to Asda or Morrison's or something, but I'm just a wee bit scared because I don't drive, so I can't do the deliveries. Mm-hmm. But I'm just scared, man, see if you're in that environment. It'd be a stressful environment. People don't really care. Like, I've worked with the public before, mate. They don't give a fuck. So I would be scared that I would get sick do you know what I mean no, no. fucking hats off to the people that work in supermarkets right now it's uh, a horrible time it's wild and it's mental isn't it because people probably I don't class myself as a celebrity but I've probably got a fan base but people look up to people like me and you as kind of like the, the pillars of society like all oh, the other two guys that are flying but it's funny how this happens in it and then the, the whole process changes and we're like fucking hell that wee guy walks in Tesco is an absolute hero because they are because they're going to, they're going to sell, sell Joy's onion rings to the rest of their life, you know what I mean? It's fucking <laughs> white. I don't know. And that's how my mom, honey, is fried, mate, because she's in a care home. So they, they've got a relationship with all the old people. It's not, it's not like that they're in and out. They people are, that's their house, their home, you know what I mean? So my mom's got a relationship with a lot of these people. And some of them are dying, mate. So it's, if these people would say NHS, NHS are phenomenal and they're, they're absolutely yeah. angels. But we forget about the, the carers and the people working the shops and that they've all got a role to play and they're all superstars. Did you see that video the other day? I love a good greet, man. Honestly, mate, I see every single day on Twitter. I, I greet at one video. It could be a cute puppy video. It could be a fat guy throwing off a skateboard. I'm greeting at it, right? But did you see the one the other day oh, about oh, the, the carer that broke the that? pillow? And to, that does, mate. That does good. Aye. See, I don't know if you're alright with us showing this, but is it cool if we show that, Andrew, just for the punters that have maybe not seen it? Um, it's a viral video. It's just like a care. I any worries. It's like a care assistant that brought in a pillow for the old guy, and it had a picture of his wife on it that passed away. It's really moving. Yeah, imagine if I worked in a care home, I'd bring in that photo. I'd be like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be I'd be like that to an eighty six year old guy here, mate. Here, mate, you want that? <laughs> Who drew that for you? <laughs> Mama. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was sounded weird as fuck. Girl, didn't it? It was, <laughs> Did you it post was, that? Was that a live photo? Like <laughs> <laughs> it was the art. Here, here's a video here. It was the artistic person in Scott Squad. Here we go, trips. I got you a present. Hey? I got you a present. What's that, darling? Ha! Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, my oh. God! <laughs> oh, that's so awful. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh. lady! <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh darling! <laughs> Let me see, Ken. Show us what you've got, Ken. Let me see what you... Oh, Ken. Look at that. 
How beautiful. Oh. How beautiful. Oh. Oh, oh dear. Oh, my God. I thought that might be a bit better than your photograph. Oh. <laughs> Come in. <laughs>、That's good for the soul, isn't it? That's why I never want to fall in love with anybody, man. I don't want to fall in love with anybody. Aye. That, that's the spirit, Gary Fox. I just, want, I, just want, I just want to die, my own man, right? Colours are naked. Naked. I didn't want to see my man's face when I like, you know what I mean? I just want to go, I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> where, where would you want to die? You're in the woods or something? Aye, mate. Choking a kebab. See, see if I choke on a kebab, mate. That's going to be the only occasion where somebody's doing my eulogy. They're going to be like, "This is the way you know, wanted to go." <laughs> Body and a German doner kebab. You know what I mean? Like fucking a German doner kebab. You've、okay. changed, mate. I'm, I'm telling you, mate. This fucking boy takes away my heat. It's a.、Uh, I can't eat another. See, it's a very German doner in general because I went to Berlin dinner to get a kebab. I can't.、Okay. Eat, I can't eat skin kebabs now. I'm fucking too good for that. Sorry, troops. Sorry for watching us, and you're like he's one of the boys. He's nice and Dennis now. Name your skin kebabs, or Gary boy. Skin kebabs. You can't even eat kebabs that you talk about. <laughs> well, that is true, mate. I don't eat kebabs anymore. Probably why. Probably why I don't want to kill myself anymore. You can get that because I went to that vegan restaurant next to the Times Building down the stairs. Pigeon something was that called? Would you say that? The vegan restaurant, the tin. The, I... the pigeon.、Um... Sort of pigeon. <laughs> Some pigeon. I'm not too sure. I'm not too、I、sure. See next to the Evening Times, Sydney World. Ah,、uh, oh, the flying duck. Yeah, fucking、uh, madman. <laughs> duck pigeon. See right there, that. But they, they do vegan donut kebabs. It's fucking beautiful. I have tried them. Um, they're lovely. The chips are better banging, I know. Aye, remember I said I was going to take you for a munch actually. Before you relapsed, <laughs> when the actual kebabs here, I was going to have a kebab a couple of weeks ago. See when all this happened, and see being self-employed and all that shit. Obviously, when you fucking lost everything overnight, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm not going to get mad with it." So I'll have a kebab,、mm-hmm. and then go shut down. And I was like, "Saved by the bell, by the way."、Mm-hmm. So I stayed strong, mate. Ah, they've been ashamed, man, because you put all that work in. Ah, I know. It's just. Oh well, because、eh? food addiction's real, by the way. I'm the same, mate. I, I'm a,、uh, I'm a total comfort eater. I eat to celebrate, and I eat for sadness. I just fucking, I'm out. So that's how the CBT. That's how I want to help you. My eating, mate. My eating's my drug. Hi. I didn't eat. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I don't know why I'm finding that funny because I 100% agree with you, mate. And I, <laughs> I'm the exact same. I don't even know why I'm giggling. I would see if I was skin. I would suck a dick for a kebab. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if my man's watching now. I would, I'd suck a dick for a kid and walk the boys. I'm fucking on you. Walk the boys. Walk the boys, mate. I've been the best cowboy guy ever had in his life. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about this, right? Obviously, we're a couple of weeks away from it. But how about the two years came come from Springburn, right? So, how about like you? You're more famous than me, right? So you get more money. Fuck you, Billy. Right, but you want to do like a eighty. Twenty split. If you work the knob and I work the buzz, <laughs> I can't get back. You can get a double gobble after. Somebody's going to fucking come in this at you like you know. Give me a kebab, give me a gobble, <laughs> and I'm going to be there. That's the worst bit about it all. You know what I mean? It's going to be brutal. It's Tasha, no? I'm just realised I'm sitting like that with Tasha. I work the buzz. <laughs> So another thing I want to talk to you about, I know it was like it reminded me of the Truman Show when he's escaping at the end. Have you ever seen that?、Oh, the Truman Show. That's what I feel like to do. Well, that's what I felt like when I seen you on your boat sailing, mate. Oh, mate, I love being the boat. I can't wait to go back on it. I fucking can't wait to get back on that boat and just not come back. Aye. Because I had planned. I had. I've took half. I took half the whole of July. Um,、mm-hmm. go sailing for a whole month. So I'm fucking devastated that's not happening. But that's my that's my good place on the boat on the yacht. Look, um, how did that happen? How did that come about? Did you learn that in the army? Ah,、uh, no. Before that, see, when I was a boy, I I、mm-hmm. joined the army cadets when I was a wee guy just to get us out the scheme because I was shy to gang fighting. And、uh, mm-hmm. I was in the cadets about three weeks, and I got the call Ocean Youth Trust Scotland, 
came to the cadet hall and they're like, right, who likes to go sailing? And all the wee guys are all wee nets. They're like, no, we just buy one pop birds and smash golfs. And uh, I was like, I'll go sailing. So they took us, so they did their course, um, a sailing course for a week and they take you away. So I joined the army. I'd done it in the army as well. And then when I got out, I thought, and I got back to it a few weeks ago, I just thought, you know what? I've got the finances to do that kind of stuff now, which I, don't, I have to do. Um, Aye. But it's, it's been good, mate. But I can't wait to get back to normal, back to gigging, and then get back out the water. But it's good. Cause it's, see, because you're well known, you can get to be tunes, uh, there's be harbours, mate, and they're all like, oh, that wee fat guy for Facebook. <laughs> yeah, there's a free stuff, you know what I mean? Because the first kind of go there since Valley Codley in 1947. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Aye, because I remember at the start when you were kind of kicking off, you were getting a lot of free, um, free food and stuff, weren't you? Like things sent to you. Mate, I was sponsored, right? I was sponsored by Scoffable and a gym at the exact same time, and I had to balance <laughs> my page between the two of them. You know what I mean? Like hashtag Village Gym, and then the next day I'm like a kebab. <laughs> <laughs> it goes to your head, mate. It goes to your fucking head to get free stuff. It drives you mad. Were they getting jealous to each other? With each other? Oh, was it? Not at all. It was somebody on my page had messaged me and said, big man, he said, you're becoming very salesy. And it, it made me think, because I, I was getting free motors and all, a company called Capital Vehicle would give me like BMWs and stuff. So I became the wee bam that sat in a taxi and shouted I used to his phone to this point mm. that was running about in a BMW. Like, oh, thanks to like, a Love Island contestant, you know what I mean? Thanks for the teeth. <laughs> ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. And, uh, so the guy had said to us, listen, you're becoming very salesy. And it hurts me and I'm like, do you know what? I don't want to use that lose that genuineness to people and yeah. become a fucking seller, you know what I mean? So I just said to every cunt, listen, I don't want involved. Thanks for the models, thanks for the kebabs, thanks for the gym, um <laughs> the rest. Well mate, I mean you're only human. Mm. If somebody would see somebody off of me for the kebabs, I'd be a bit forty stone right now, mate. So <laughs> good on you. I know, I'd done well. My ma, my ma was the best one. Because what they do is they would send us 400, so they'd give you 400 pounds at a time. And, wow. And vouchers. So, that, so I could send, so, so I could go to my page and say, right, I'm giving you 100 pounds for pizza vouchers. There you go. So I gave my ma one, and they were 40 pounds each. Mm-hmm. And I said to my ma, treat yourself, get, get like a starter, get a dessert, a can of Coke. Because whatever you spend, that whole 40 quid's gone. They bought us son. So I phoned her the next day and I'm like, I'm coming down. So I was doing the house, mate. Bear in mind it's 40 quid. I'm expecting to spend 23 quid max, right? And I was <laughs> at the house, I'm like, I'd get a voucher. She says, I've got myself a chip here. I just got a fish and chips. And I'm like, no, I told you to fucking spend as much as you can. Treat yourself. She went, no, I did. And she opened the fridge, mate. There's about 32 cans of Coke. Just dropping my phone. Just like, big man, what's more the juice you have in a gaff? <laughs> I'm like, ah, mate, sorry. <laughs> but now to that voucher. And how is, I mean, I don't want to be too personal, so don't worry about it. If I, if I go into too personal, just let me know. But obviously your mum, um, you say she's an addict, so... I take it she's got sobriety in her life then? Ah, she's, she's in the AA stuff, you know what I mean? She does, uh-huh. she's, been sober. she's been sober for a good while now. Um, but she just needed that support, you know what I mean? Because I knew mm-hmm. she was going to be in a dark place. Because there's people in her home that are dying that she loves. And she's got a relationship. And I thought, you know what? I'd be as well cushioning the blow with her and giving her a bit of support. Then I'd allow mm-hmm. her to, to be, be herself. Because it's an alcohol extreme in it. This isolation is perfect for an alcoholic. Nobody can check up on you. You can sit and get steaming. So, so you need to support people who, who are addicts or they've got an addiction somehow. Um, yeah. So up 14 days, made, made sure she was all right. She was fine when I left. And she's doing brilliant now. She's back out walking every day and, and get her fitness done. So I'm proud of her. But brilliant, mate. She's That's a good son life. right there, by the way. She's up my whole life. So it's only fair that I, I get back. You know what I mean? Good, mate. Some Having somebody in the family that's sober and all can only have a positive effect on people. I know it's like a, it's like a light bulb in the family when somebody's uh, sober. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not a big drinker, mate. I probably drink once, twice a year if they're a big show, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. she's lucky in that sense that I've not got that stupid head. I just have a wee glass of wine. Like, I know how much it means to stay sober. Uh, good good on you, mate. You know I mean? So when was your last gig? Motherwell, mate, Motherwell concert hall, Valentine's Day. And Aye. you post something, we were going to film it, and I went, no, don't film it. It's but the first tour show after the Ruby Tedro nights. I'm fucking gutted, mate. I'm totally gutted that I film it. Because that had to be in this year's DVD, I know. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully we get back to things October, November, and I can just change the gigs about it, if that's what happens. 
Ah, it doesn't really seem like it's going to get back any time soon, does it? I've said to, me, I've said to David, um, my manager over there in Hopkins, I said to him the other day, like, I think after July, if they've still got this chat, would you just postpone the show to next year? Because I've got the Hydro next year. So, yeah. just put the tickets into the Hydro, then I've got a restarting point. But I'm just going to hold off, mate. I can't make a decision and lose all that money, you know what I mean? And no. I don't want to fuck people about. I don't want to keep postponing shows. But I'll hold off until July and then make a decision based on what's happening in the world. Aye. Do you know maybe, what you should? I'm sorry, mate, on you go, on you go. Maybe, maybe back to normal four weeks. Aye. I doubt it though, eh? Because there's a lot of stupid bastards out there, man. Especially down the road, like in Springburn and stuff. Cunts are fucking sunbathing in the park and all that. I was, I was trapped because my, my, obviously my family's staying in Lindsay Terrace. So mm-hmm. I was up, that's where the house was, my man was from. So I was up getting the rains. Trapped the rains half a day, sorry. And uh, the park was filming and I'm like, what the fuck, man? I know. There's a lot of like... I mean, I got a walk, walk every day for an hour. You need to do that. Because if you sit in a house, especially people with mental health, you, you can't sit in a house, you need to go out, put a mask on, go out and do a big exercise, don't touch it, yeah. you know what I mean? And, but there's, your, your mind's been out playing for fucking three, four years. You see it, I just see my drive through. There's yeah. companies all around about playing with each other, and it's like, Aye. it's a shame for the mains, because they're at risk, yeah. you know what I mean? I had a tough day today. This is the first time during this whole thing that today was my worst day. I woke up, I never got to sleep to five o'clock last night and I woke up the day. And you ever get that way? You just look like rough as fuck, man. My eyes were like Doug's balls. I had to go in for a cold shower, had a couple of coffees. Eventually, I'm all right now. But it can get in tap of you, man. Even if you're trying your best, it can still get in tap of you. So everybody needs to try and keep their chin up. And I'm going to put the, some information for the Samaritans on the podcast at some point, it will be done at the bottom or an image will pop up or something because I phoned the Samaritans when I was younger and they really helped me I've as done well. It. You phoned them or not? I've done it a few times, mate. I've been a suicide, Aye. suicide last year. But I think the important thing for you, mate, the note, like, is your sleep is so important. You need to get in your bed, mate. See, if you don't get a good sleep, mate, your anxiety is just going to fucking eat your life. Yeah. That's my, when I ran the group, my pal Ryan runs it now. He took it off us. Um, the mental health group, my first thing to all the boys was is get sleep. You need seven hours of sleep a day and that's going to help so much. Because yeah. a lot of the guys are like, oh, I went to bed at four o'clock this morning, sat up playing the PlayStation. Like, that's why your heat's fried. Because you, your body's just fucking getting fucked with the day's sleep. Yeah. So it's so important that you, you get asleep. You know what I mean? It's just... Uh, it just ruins your, your whole day's ruined yeah. if you don't get a good sleep. You wake up tired or feeling fucked and you have anxiety. You need to ride. So see with the anxiety group, is that stopped for the time being, or is it still on? I think they're doing it online now, mate. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm getting a bit of help off a charity called Men Matter Scotland. Yeah. The, the, the Tony Crawford, he's been giving me a wee hon, because I, I was like you, mate, I was feeling too good um, in the last couple of weeks there, so wee Tony kind of picked me back up again and, and reminded me who I was and what my purpose was in life. And then mm-hmm. I'm back on it, mate, I'm back on it, mate. I fucking... I don't know, like a cannonball, is that a thing you use? Um, so I'm going to do a CBD course, mate, and I'm just going to dig deep, fix myself, mate, and then maybe speak about it in an, at an event, help other, a free event, obviously, help other guys or, or women if they want to come. Um, Good, it's, mate. It's self-love, it? It's fixing yourself. And that's what I love about the therapy side of the learning. When you're learning to be a therapist or a practitioner, you need to fix yourself first. And that's yeah. what I love about, mate. I just want to dig deep and fucking get, get the nitty and the gritty, get it dealt with. Uh, you want to hear some people, I, rem- I remember years ago I went to a therapist and she asked me what I did when I was stressed. How did I like relax when I was stressed? And I said to her, what do you do to relax when you're depressed and stressed? And she says, take my horse out. And I was like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> like, you take your horse out? Like, we've, we've got a different life here, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, that's the thing. I speak about mental health a lot, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. obviously that, that's my thing. Like comedy, comedy makes me money, mate, but my passion's in, in mental health because I've just I've seen so many people in my life struggle and, and pass away because of it. And uh-huh. they coming through the scheme. There's always somebody committing suicide because of bad mental health. So it's like that's that's my fire. But 
that's how I do the CBD course because because people ask me every day, mate. There's always a guy messaging me and saying, mate, I'm not feeling too good. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know what to say to you, mate. Like, I recommend yeah. the Chris's house, I'm in Matt Scotland or Ryan at the Bermuda Group. But I would like to have a bit of base knowledge so that if somebody came to us and they were suicidal, I could give them a bit of help before I pass them on so it's a bit more genuine, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm telling you, mate, if there's anything that you would like to for me to share on my page that could help you out, just send me the info and I'll always pop it up in the podcast, numbers, websites, because I'm doing this because I'm trapped in the house and I'm bored at my tits, but I want to do something positive as well. So if it's helping anybody, just let me know and I'll stick it up on the page, mate. That's it, mate. If one person watches this, listen to us two fucking chat minutes, it's on, have a laugh. If one person watches this and gets a help for it, that's life-changing, mate. Because that person right. can help somebody else and vice versa, that'll go down the line and it's just taking the time for you to do this, mate, means a lot. Because somebody's probably sitting demented and they're a massive fan of yours and they get to see you sitting in your gaff, personal as fuck. Rod Aaron, you know what I mean? You can't get any better, can you? Because you're a great guy and you've achieved amazing things. Oh, thank still, you very much. Still the most famous guy in Swingburg, mate. I ain't can fuck. <laughs> Dad and Bono, Gary Little, then it's me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm happy for that, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no at all, mate. You're a good lad, man. I've I always had time for you. I go in the barbers, mate, trying to name drop myself. And I'm like, I heard the damn Coral. And I'm like, fuck up, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I get that, I know. I get that, I know. Do you know, Gary? <laughs> Remember that time we can they stop laughing? Because I think maybe I messaged you first. I was like, see, literally every time... I walk through Springburn, and somebody's like, ah, do you know Gary Folds? And then you're like, ah, that's a fucking same with me. It's a wee addict, mate. He's like, oh, big man, I've seen you before at <laughs> the shopping. And I'm like, oh, have you, mate? Brilliant, but did you enjoy my video? He went, aye, mate, you're funny as fuck, that's Scott Squad. <laughs> and I was like, mate, that's Dan Coro, I'm Gary Folds. <laughs> 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 but something like that, it was like me, guy, through Facebook, he just assumed that I was you. Um, wow, well, well. It's nice, mate. Springburn smashed it, mate, for comedians. Smashed it. Aye. Just showed you if you're born in fucking the pits of hell, you'll get a sense of humour. Well, I'm, I'm cheeky, mate. I'm for City Hall. I'm not technically for Springburn, but I lived in Springburn my later life. Right. City Hall, Springburn. <laughs> I know, fuck's sake. I'm going to get Swimmins a wee guy to account in the shoppy. <laughs> the shoppy. <laughs> God, God, man, it's mad. <laughs> what did you say there? A city centre, that's when we got the bus to Springburn to do our shopping. <laughs> what did you get? A fucking pound card. <laughs> and a Greg's. I've got a question here that I'm going to ask you. I'm not too sure what it means, um, but a girl called Emma Donnelly has asked me, how is the Winky project coming along? Oh, mate, it's not going good, mate. It's, uh, do you like Willow Winkies, the sausage? Who? Oh, you don't know, but did you like them when you see the sausage? Is that a trick question, mate? Aye. Why, why do you think I'm in this fucking mess? <laughs> I, I used to, I used to love them, mate. I imagine, imagine, right? I know it's it's different. I want a big winky. <laughs> we can use that as the cutaway for the podcast, wait, right? Just that wee bit. I want a big winky. No, but a day, mate. I don't, I don't mean like a big Wally. I mean a, a big winky. So see, like a Wally winky. Imagine right. it's a big one, man. It's just fucking puffed up. I'd be unreal, mate. But it's not the same as a pork sausage cut. So actually, a pork is no. It's different. So you want one the size of a, like a foot long? Ah, you like a hot dog size, Wally Winky? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fucking class with it. Why don't you do that then, when you come back? Like, do a hot dog stand for massive fucking Wally Winkies? Like a schemey Hess and Bloomingdale? <laughs> <laughs> right, today guys, we're going to make a big Wally Winky! <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about after <laughs> you know, in a couple of months, somebody's going to be putting them, mate. Yeah, I'm telling you to know. I tagged holes in it, I know to try and entice them, but they can't have been more than they love you. Fucking. Wait, you actually messaged them? I tagged them in the video, mate. Aye, try and entice them. Maybe because you do that, that's what fucking every cut does, isn't it? You tag a cup then, and they'll send you something for nothing. So I was like, listen, this is, I'm going to use that asshole moment and try and yeah. get a big winky, because every guy wants a big winky, didn't they? Like, fucking. That'd be amazing, mate. I'd try that. No, and you're a vegan gorilla. Fucking right, I'll try it, mate. It sounds brilliant. What was that? A vegan winky. Was that just like a half a carrot? I don't know, mate. We'll fucking we'll get one made for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate, see anything that you love, you could get it in a vegan version. Anything. Kebabs, cheeseburgers, bacon. 
you think you're beating? Yep, it's called faking. Can you actually? Yep. What's, does it taste the same as beating? No, really, mate. It's a bit shy, to be honest. I mean, it does the trick, but... You, like, nearly, see if you're... you nearly had this vegan there. You nearly had me going vegan again. And then, oh. vegan. nah, it's pure shite. <laughs> it's, it's no pure shite, but it's like... It's, do you know what I mean? See the, see the corn chicken nuggets, mate? They're life-changing. Aye. I, that's what I buy for the mains, mate. The mains don't even know any difference. They prefer the corn chicken nuggets to the normal ones. There you go. They last longer as well. How scary is it that we're living in times that McD- all McDonald's are shut and there's no aeroplanes in the sky? It's beautiful, mate. It's mad, isn't it? I love it, mate. I've started recycling as well. I've never done that before. I'm all about the recycling, mate. You need to do it. I, know, I think this is, I think as bad as all this is, with the corona stuff, I think it's going to have harm as a positives. Uh-huh. I mean, like, even I'm buying, I'm buying local now, mate. When I, go to, I don't only go to Tesla and get my fish or my mussels, whatever. I'm going to like the fishmongers doing it at salt market. I'm going to my butchers, you know what I mean? And I've never, I think that's in the fruit shop. I go to the fruit shop now. I've never, I just go to Tesco, get a big shop, go home. Um, Aye. We've been spending local, mate. So I think it's going to have a good impact in the community. After it, obviously, it's a shame it's going to happen. People are going to die. It's fucking terrifying. But I think people, Aye. I think people are more brand new as well, mate. I've had less assholes than ever. I can't believe it. People are being nicer, and they have noticed that when I'm in shops, people are talking a lot more. And even online, mate, online, normally I'm getting terrorised off some kind. You know what I mean? Like fucking, cause I'm shy. <laughs> but it's it's not been as bad. There's not been anybody that's really bothered. So I've noticed a massive difference. And then people in the street, everybody's fucking smiling at each other again. Aye. So it's, it's good, mate. That how people realise the world's too short. Or life's too short. Uh, life is way too short, mate. Um. Can I ask you an all? Like, are you still are you still religious? I mean, I still have my faith, mate. I maybe maybe not as, as big on the the church side of stuff, but I mm. listen to a sermon every day. I'm massive with Kanye West now. He's got that Sunday service. Um, oh, mate, that's amazing, isn't it? Listen to it. I've listened to a couple, but I don't. I've not listened to a full one. That's the Miami. Uh, it's fucking unreal. I'll get into it. I put out um, some hymns. I was listening to a hymn on Spotify the other night. It was like African American music back for the thirties, and like, see, even if you're no religious, like, how can you? How can that not touch you? Like, it's so powerful. It's amazing. I'm, I'm older. I don't class myself as religious. Like, I've just got a spiritual faith. Like, I believe in a God. You know. Mm-hmm. It's just like that's my, people see maybe use the, the analogy the universe. That's like my thing. Mm-hmm. Universe. I love the secret, I love the magic, I love the Bible, but I love it because it's positive. The Bible's like a self help book in it. It's not like can, but people use it. People use it to make rules and, and to be fucking cuts to people. I don't do that. I just read it as in a sense like great, right, let's find a story that can maybe suit my life, you know what I mean? And but I like the, the idea of the what did he call that in the addiction services? That the all being or the fucking higher power. I like the idea of that. I like the idea that you can speak to something because there's a connection in it. Like, I pray. And, and I know people look at me and go, a big man's not a Christian. He's a fucking heavy rogue. You know what I mean? Like, he can't be a Christian. He's just done 70 minutes about fingering on the stage. <laughs> but, uh, the Massive whole, woolly winkies. Uh, <laughs> the big winky stuff. But it's the whole connection thing. I love me. I love that. Like, I love the thought I see my dad. Again, you know what I mean? I love the thought I see my granny and my granddad. Like, so... Mm-hmm. But maybe I'm not hundred percent like, oh my God, it's hundred percent real. We came down and spoke this and fucking we sat and had all the winkies on the couch. But it's like <laughs> it's a belief, I've got a belief in my system but I'm like something has to be there. If you look at the mm. universe and the stars and we're not the only people on the planet the, the planet is that a word? The fucking universe. Yeah. We, we can't be, you know what I mean? There's got to be something that there's got like, we're so intelligent, mate. It's just like even when you try and think about that, mate, it blows your mind, doesn't it? When you try yes. and think, like, when you think about space, it's unlimited, mate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Tell me there's no something out there that's unlimited. And, uh, and I want to see my dad, mate, so that better happen. Well, it's, I can understand, mate. It's a beautiful thing. i seen it, uh, see the Mars rover. They posted a photo the other night, and it was a picture of the Earth. And it was just like a wee tiny grain of sand. And it's mind-blowing just how tiny we are. But I don't know if I believe in God, but I, I believe in a higher power. I've got a higher power in my life. Something, I, something that 
Yeah. I do think when we die that there's going to be something something better. And that's why I, I look into all different faiths. I'm, obviously, I'm a Christian because I go to a Christian church and I read a Christian Bible. But mm-hmm. I would pick up the Quran, see if there was an English version of the Quran. And I have done that. My uncle's have picked up and I've read about it just to see the differences, you know what I mean? And, but I love that idea that there being a higher power. I love that idea that there's somebody, because especially me being so lonely and, and I suffer loneliness. I can be sitting mm-hmm. there and, house and still feel the loneliness country room, you know what I mean? But it's like I love having that connection with God or the universe that I can say, right. God, see the day, make the day a better, make me thrive, make any positive stuff come towards me, break after negativity, look after my family. And that's my prayer every day, you know what I mean? And, and I love having that, that connection that I, I'm speaking to somebody because it feels real, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, well, maybe not religious, but I've definitely, I've definitely the higher power. That, that, that no, I mean, that's, I appreciate you for saying that, especially with the loneliness thing. I think yeah, people can talk about depression, they can talk about addiction. But see, when it comes to saying that you're lonely or talking about food addiction, I'm talking about myself here as well, by the way. I'm not just talking about you. But see, when you, you don't want to say that you're lonely to people, especially if you come from a working class background, you can't say that you're lonely. You just keep all that shit bottled up inside. Or see, when you think you've got food uh, problems with food and stuff, people look at you like you're fucking mental. But see if you've done that, oh, I'm an alcoholic, or if I've got a drug problem, I've got depression, they'd be like, oh, I hope you're all right. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and that's, I think that's, you know, we've, we've got to break that, that environment. Mm-hmm. Right, that's all talking about this, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like the roommate, I just want to fucking, obviously, me, me and my wife have separated, do you know what I mean? So, I'm yeah. at my life where I'm like, I just want somebody to love us, and I want to love somebody, and I'm off to do this lockdown with somebody, do you know what yeah. I mean? It will come, but for me, for me, that's uh, having that higher power or, or God to speak to every day because it keeps me positive. I love, yeah. yeah, I love worship. See, that's how I love the Kanye West thing. See the music. I would love to go to a church like that, mate. Just, just walks, having mm-hmm. a rap. You know what I mean? That's that's what it's all about. Isn't it? I don't know what there. Did you say? Rap up on a church. <laughs> A bit God. <laughs> a fucking fat nun. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Honey, that, the rap battle, it's all good stuff. <laughs> Trying a bl- break dance. Is that weird? But uh, I, I think it's um, that's a big thing for me, mate. It's funny we spoke about the loneliness thing. Like, I'm always craving somebody's attention, you know what I mean? And that's probably how I do the job that I do as a comedian. I'm craving attention all the time. It's, it's, like, it's like food to me. The more likes I get in a post, the better I feel. The, the less likes I get in a post, the worse I feel. Um, yeah. So that's something that I like to deal with as well, because I like to be able to be happy in myself, and and obviously I like to eat something. That's going to happen soon, hopefully. But um, yeah, I, it will, mate. You're a good guy. You need to just take it a day at a time, keep your chin up, and just remain positive, and just keep doing what you're doing. My focus is the wins, isn't it? Because obviously they need me in life, you know what I mean? They need me about and. Because it's hard for them, and it when somebody breaks up, I, I was like, as a wee guy, Mario Dan fucked off. Um, yeah. I broke me up, you know what I mean? And I don't yeah. want to go through that situation. I'm amazed to know that they're loved, and, and I'll be there for them whenever they need me. So that's how I get them three days a week. Um, so they've got quality time with me. And yeah. if you another time, I should get for me to say, listen, exactly what's going on next night, and they can come up. But that's all the yeah. time I feel lonely, my veins are about, because my veins love me unconditionally. I wish I could, some, I could meet somebody who loves me the way my wings love me, the way they look at you and, you know what I mean, without you they couldn't live. I love that. I love, that's what I love about being a dad. Yeah. Whole, it, it's a, a beautiful thing through a breakup, as heartbreaking as that is, that you're still able to see your kids three times a day because you hear some horror stories about mums and dads not being able to see their kids and so maybe hard. that's your higher power, mate, seeing your kids, you know what I mean? I'm so lucky that my ex is so good, you know what I mean? She's so positive and, and she's mm-hmm. massive into faith and all, so she's got that whole God thing behind her, so she wouldn't be a that kid, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. She's so good and she's so supportive. So that's how it's a, is a relationship wise, but we're done. The two are just like, right, we're done, and that's. Yeah. That's, yeah, isn't it? It's happened sometimes. She's a great person, and I'm lucky. She is who she is. Because I hear that, I get guys that come to the group, and like, well, my, my missus took the mains off me, or vice versa. Or there's a lassie saying my, my husband's took the mains off me and I can't see them. And I don't think I could cope with that, mate. I think that's what would push me to suicide, you know, seeing my wings, mate. That would kill yeah. us massively. 
Um, so I get when couples of different sexes say to me, I'm really struggling with the wings because I totally get mm-hmm. it. I couldn't imagine not seeing my wings now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it would break me completely. Um, so that's what keeps me in a surf, mate, the wings. What's the for the wings, mate? I'm going to be here 100%. Wow, yeah. man. For myself, that's what I thought about. You know what I mean? That's been the guilt with my head. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I've met Ashley a few times and she's a good lassie. I know she does a lot of charity work and stuff. And it's a shame that that didn't work out. But it's good that you are still, you know, all right with each other. Uh, she's a pillar of the community, mate. See, see yeah. Ashley in the community, mate. She's a fucking, she's worth her weight in gold. Uh, so she, that's a that's a heart I think mean, that's a big thing that we, we had got together that we connected with two have got a massive heart for the scheme and the, and the people and about us. Um, yeah. That's what I, and I love that about her to the day I die, mate. You know what I mean? And that lassie's done nothing but give me good. So it's very rarely you hear a people break up, they can speak so highly to each other. I hope she can say the same with me, but um yeah. great person, mate, and I'm so proud of her, you know what I mean? And I still see her, she's still doing stuff to the community, she's still got a yeah. lot of stuff and and I'm lucky I've got that support network behind us, but I couldn't imagine. You hear a divorces, mate, and you're like, that sounds horrific. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm so blessed I've not got that, that issue. Ah, uh, you're like, uh, how can somebody just walk into the ocean completely naked and then after six months they're getting fucking pushed up against the wall? You're like, I, I kind of get it. Life can be shit at times. Oh. So I take it you won't be going back on Tinder anytime soon? They can't take me serious on Tinder. <laughs> I don't think it's a fucking joke. But... When I went on Tinder, people were like, "Are you that guy for Vine?" I was like, "Vine? That was fucking ten years ago." That's what I knew you for before I became a comedian was for your Vine videos. Because you I were still a, get that, mate. You were a superstar in Vine, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> See when Vine shut down, did, did that? Did that have any sort of impact? Because I was thinking about this with Facebook. If Facebook mm-hmm. shut down, I'd be fucked. Because my whole audience is on Facebook. Did that have an impact on you? I was very lucky because I noticed that I was starting to be known as the guy from Vine instead of Darren Connell, the comedian. And I didn't like it at all. I, I was at the stand one night and I was doing stand-up and the guy, a guy for the crowd shouted, there's that guy for Vine. And I was like, nah, I can't. I can't have this. I've put too much work into being a stand-up comedian and I don't want to be known as that guy. So I stopped probably about six or seven months before it crashed. I stopped making vines and just focused on stand-up. So I was quite lucky, but um, it benefited my stand-up. It benefited my social media. It made me sharper as well because you've only got six seconds to do a joke. So... But it got toxic and all. There was a lot of trolls, mate. And uh, see, at the time, like, I know that's why I always relate to you, but at the time, I was getting trolled and I was getting fake accounts sending me death threats and stuff. And I couldn't deal with it, mate. But I look back in it now and I'm like, I'm glad that that happened because, see, anytime I get any negativity now, it does not affect me at all. And it wouldn't be like that if I went through that. We have Vine, well, do you know what I mean? In the sense that I'm like that, seeing my live videos, they, they made me a better comedian. Mm-hmm. When I do a live, mate, I, just, I don't write that down. I just pick a subject, turn it on and crack on me. And yeah. then after that, I'll sit there. It's like, for me, it's like throwing shite to the wall. Eventually, it's one's going to stick. And it, that happens. There'll be like five shite ones and man, it gets fucking a million views. Yeah. Um, creatively, it's good because I can just go in and, and riff and engage with people and, and talk about something. Then I come after like, fuck, I'm writing that down. So if I'm doing free fight, it's like, for me it's like open mic nights. If it's yeah. like five minutes, that's what I do three a week. So it's a like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Five minutes, I'll get one good fucking joke out of one of these stories, you know what I mean? Brilliant. But it's good, mate, isn't it? It's good. And I get you with the, the troll thing, mate. I get that. It's not been, actually, it's not been bad the last two weeks. I'm fucking blessed in it. Um, yeah. That, mate, it, it gets to my head because you've got that mad skin head and I'm like, there's this dafty style he's getting smashed. <laughs> Aye. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, cause like I, I remember what I even went into a police station and just got some advice because it was getting that intense to the point that I mean I wasn't really, like scared, but I was like, see if I'm in Glasgow City Centre, is one of these cunts going to jump me? Like I had that feeling, and I've got a wee. I don't know if you notice it because of the, the ginger tash, but see sometimes when I smile. Like, I've got a wee fat lip there. 
I fell off a bike when I was a wee guy. And see, when I was doing vines and pulling mad faces, sometimes it would stick out and you could see it. And they set up this vine and it was like, fuck, it was so long ago, I can't even really remember. I think it was like Darren Connell's lip is cancer or something. And they just used to message me every single day saying, die of cancer and all that kind of stuff. To the point that it was, it was fucking scary, mate. Like, looking at that and you're thinking, somebody's actually went out their way to make that. Uh, but fuck it and I, I always believe see when like, somebody gives me but when I first started doing the when the videos first started going viral I'd bite back I would go and I'd look at a picture and then I would go back into the status and put a picture on and just absolutely slaughter them mm-hmm. and then I realised somebody said something one day and it was like hurting people hurt people and then I thought maybe this is just it was always guys mate was, I've never I've never had a lassie give me abuse it's always guys and I always had the processes like now that I became an ambassador for mental health, that mm. person might be struggling, even though what they're doing is a pure cunty thing, you know what I mean, yeah. but they might be struggling so much that they think they can just vent to somebody who's not really there, but I'm there, they must think I can't see the fucking comments, so yeah. I, I just remove them, mate, I just delete them and block them. Um, That's the best thing to do. I've been learning a lot of things about projection, have you ever heard of that? Huh? So I don't know if you've ever experienced in this in your life, but have you ever had a moment in your life when you've had a family member or a friend say to you all the time that you need to lose weight or you need to eat healthy, but you look at them and they're fat? And then you think, why are they telling me to lose weight when they're fat? Or you hear somebody that's getting their hair calling one of their mates a baldy bastard and you're like, you're just being funny, funny, ironic. I've heard people with glasses calling other people specky. And it might be different levels, but it's essentially projection because they're insecure about their image, their weight, or anything like that, and they project it out to other people. But see, when they say something like that to you and you, you're hurt, so if somebody says something to you on your page and you're like, ah, fucking dickhead, but see, if you looked at it, nine out of ten times, it's probably projection because they're fucked. And that's the spirit that I feel about when I'm looking at somebody like that. I'm like, do you know what? There's no point in biting back because they might be mad with it. They might be fucking climbing the walls, ready to do something stupid, and I'm like, I'm just going to delete it and block it. Aye. And then it becomes a fight. If I reply back, then then my, my spirit is in a fight. You know what I mean? Then my whole body is like, it's got the negative feelings, I've got the gut feelings. and But I've, I've nearly, people slag my brains a few times, and that's nearly made us go rogue. You know what I mean? That's why I'm like, where do you stay? <laughs> Aye. Well, that's understandable. That's quite, that's crossing our line, and it's creepy as fuck. I know, but the bigger the bigger the reach, the more our social reach in it. It's like there's always out there. There could be a thousand people, and I, I'm so blessed. See many people who follow me, mate. They're the nicest people in the world. They back me, they house me, they, they do everything for me, and they, they made me who I'm. Comedy mm-hmm. didn't make me who I'm, mate. It's people sitting in their houses sharing my videos made me who I was. Um, Aye. But it's like I try and remember that I represent them, and I can't back to like I can't, mate. And I've got so many people behind me, you know what I mean? So, but there could be a thousand comments saying. You're amazing, we love you, you're brilliant. And then there's mm. one guy like that, you're a fat wank, I hope you die. And it's that's in my head. I kind of yeah. see the comments, mate. I just see that one guy's comment. Then, Aye. Like, but I'm nothing to deal with, as you say, right? Just you learn. You want to do this job, mate? You've got to fucking deal with it. Yeah, that's, that's true, mate. That's the problem. See when somebody's calling you a fat wank and you click into their profile button or about 90 stone. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it, you know what I mean? Actually, I, I had a guy, like, I'm not telling you his whole name, but he referred to himself as notorious. <laughs> and a big fat baldy guy with two teeth, like, he had a, a mullet, but in a ponytail, and he called me a melt, right? And I was like, and I'm looking at his profile, and it's something notorious, and I'm like, I'm dying just to fucking terrorise this guy. But then I look at him, and I think he looks like the kind of guy who's struggling. And I'm like, if yeah. I do that, I'm just as bad as him. Yeah. You've got to be the bigger man, haven't you? You've got to say, listen, fucking go fuck yourself. I just block him. <laughs> I completely agree with you. I think on that note, mate, um, we're probably going to wrap things up. Andy, can I just double check on how long we've done? Uh, 50 minutes. Right, we've done 50 minutes, mate. Um, I could go on and we could talk all night, but I'm trying to just keep it short and sweet, and I think that was a positive kind of note to finish there, Gary. Is there anything that you kind of want to punt? Any 
I know obviously your page, your Twitter, your Instagram and stuff, but is there anything maybe that you're working on that you want to suggest? How can people get a hold of your DVD? Uh, on my website, garyfalls.co.uk. It's a download now, so it's not a DVD. They can download it straight to their computer or their phone. Brilliant. A show for the Amadillo, so it's fucking, it's a big moment for us. That's, I can't even believe we never spoke about that, mate. I'm so sorry. The tenor, mate, the tenor goes right into my fucking, right into my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Damn working the boss man by the DVD. <laughs> I'll be like, it's not my first barbecue, mate. <laughs> but listen, mate, thanks for having this. I appreciate you taking the time to get us on. It means a lot. Mate, you're more than welcome. See, anytime you want to come back on, or even if you just want to phone us and get a chat, but you're welcome anytime, mate. Just let me know. Appreciate it, bro. Have a good job. All right. Cheers, Mucker. I'll talk to you soon, mate. Bye-bye. Wait, did I leave now? <laughs> <laughs>